put a spell on you. Better look at me. Call stuff is real. Call vision is a drug. Call vision is a drug. What populism does it sound? Like Carla, what speaks to you? Um, well, I think similar to yourself, Stanley, I haven't read enough of the Bible to really accurately comment. I've read much, much more Shakespeare, so it speaks to me much more because I know more of it. Um, in terms of its kind of long-term translation and the way it speaks to humanity, I think it's also one thing we haven't spoken about, which is character. You think about Shakespeare, you think about the development of big characters, you think of Falstaff, you think of Macbeth, you think of Hamlet. And it's those personal kind of human dilemmas that I think will stand the test of time and continue to be reinterpreted. With the Bible, of course, there's all the baggage of politics and of violence and of the history of the way religions have interacted. Ethnic with cleansing, people. Exactly. genocide, Whereas, of torture. Course, yeah. So that also makes people a bit more sensitive. Um, of course, people don't have that relationship with Shakespeare's works. Though, interestingly, part of Shakespeare's popularity, we cannot deny, is tied to the British Empire. Events mm -hmm. far beyond Shakespeare himself and, of course, the continued hegemony of American, the American uh, Empire or the American country, which keeps the English languages kind of the global lingua franca. If that changes, will it be the Tao Te Ching? Will it be the Ramayana in the 21st century? Will it be some Arabic work that returns to the fore? So Shakespeare is still linked to the violence of empire, though he himself has not been used in quite the same but way as the Bible. humanity transcends that, doesn't of, it? Of course. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if he wrote in Lithuanian, yeah. but was exactly as good as he was, he wouldn't be the poet but he is he today. Did. I mean, Shakespeare's works are translated into... Of course, no, but, all, but he, didn't write in, he didn't no, write he in didn't, but nevertheless, yeah. a lot of people... He wrote in humans, that's the Shakespeare thing. Shakespeare, no, of course. Their own yeah. So did many other people in many other languages, but yeah. we cannot deny the relationship between the spread of the English language and the spread of English culture. It would be ridiculous to deny that. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of fantastic poets in every language everywhere in the world that are Shakespeare's 1,000 times more famous than. It's not because he's 1,000 times better than them. It's because culture and art and politics interact. There was a time when Arabic was the lingua franca of science and mathematics, and Arabic authors were more So popular. what's so amazing about Shakespeare for you? No, all of those same things that are amazing about Fedorsi, or amazing about mm. the Tao Te Ching, or amazing about the Ramayana, or amazing about the... Um, what, yeah, exactly, Tolstoy, or Chekhov, or yeah. mm. Breck. There's something about artists of a certain caliber and a certain level where they convey ways to be human in a way that yeah. transcends time and place, where you, you can perform it in. Japanese. Yeah. I saw a production by South Sudanese theatre company yeah. performing in their own language of Shakespeare and I still got it. I understood everything that was going on on stage but they translated it because it's that universal kind of human uh, dilemma, human frailty that I think in many ways from my limited knowledge of the Bible we don't get so much of. It's more didactic it feels to me. It's not so much fun. Yeah. Shakespeare discusses moral questions and is fascinated by moral questions, but he doesn't come out with moral answers, with, with, with the answers. He to invites them. us to come to our own conclusions, does he? Yes, I think so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Carlo, I haven't heard from you for a while. Um, well, I was thinking, last time I mean, we heard you, from you, you, it was you touched magnificent. There, well, you touched there a little bit on, on some of the issue here, is of mm. course the issue of censorship at the yeah. time and the attempt to ban many books that can, can contradicted religious doctrine. So that impacts, no one's denying the Bible's place in English literature and world literature, or its influence particularly on Shakespeare. But I think we're kind of retrospectively uh, colouring colouring our interpretation of that influence. So you've got this censorship, you've got the banning of certain books which restricts mm. people's access, but also people don't generally know Ovid or Plutarch as well as they know the Bible. So the way that people can quickly quote the passages to the Bible in Shakespeare, they can't quote the Ovid or the Plutarch or whatever else Shakespeare may have read in that we don't know uh, that he was reading. So I think there's all of those different kind of factors at work. Mm. But I think with Shakespeare, I think it's, a, it's, it's I don't know, it's, the, it's, it's, it's that he doesn't tell you what to do. And it is that it's a bit disgusting. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit hideous. And we see ourselves, and I think sometimes not just the best of ourselves, in the Bible we're encouraged to try and, or by religion, we're encouraged to paint ourselves as being particularly moral. Often when you watch or read Shakespeare, it's like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It's disgusting, it's violent, it's sexy, there's jokes everywhere. And actually I'm kind of enjoying it and that's okay. <laughs> and I feel like it's that kind of uh, lack of morality actually you know, that the, is kind of moral in its own Holding way. Holding a mirror up to nature. Well, yeah, we, what, can, we can address yeah. our own frailty. When we pretend yeah. that we're good and we're moral, 
Well, the Nazis pretended they were good and moral. Many people pretend that every empire pretends it's good and it's moral. And I'm not saying that that means that that's all religion's fault. I'm just saying it's a very dangerous space to go in, I am moral, you're not. Whereas I look at, when I read Shakespeare, I think, oh, Macbeth's kind of horrible, but there's a bit of Macbeth probably in me. Of Iago's course. a bit devious, yeah. but actually some of the things I've done in my life are probably a bit like Iago. And you've touched on something really fascinating, I think a phrase you used just a couple of moments ago that we, we I think you said, re we, we retrospectively paint. Just talking about uh, his opinions, whether it comes to race or whether it comes to gender or sexuality, <laughs> do you think there's a danger of retrospectively painting Shakespeare with contemporary colours? Of course there is. I mean, post the Holocaust, mm. reading The Merchant of Venice, mm. which some people at the time would argue was a comedy, but post-1945, how can The Merchant of Venice be read as, as a comedy? Post-transatlantic slavery, Caliban becomes a different kind of character, a fellow becomes a different kind of character. At a time when the Ottomans were undeniably a more powerful empire than Britain, those plays become very different plays, right? Which is when Shakespeare was writing. Mm. So it's a very, very difficult, uh, it's impossible. Are you uncomfortable watching Othello or, or No, not or at all. But, but I suppose my point, I, I would say Othello is one of Shakespeare's better characters. He's a bit naive, but he's, he's quite a good character. Because Iago's the he's bad guy. character. The play should have been called Iago. It's Iago's play. He's right? the so, vile racist. Yeah, of he's course. He's the bad guy. Well, but he's also, but we never know why. You know, we don't. Really with Iago, you know, there's the hint that he thinks a fellow might have slept with his wife, but that's never really addressed properly. Which is, I hate them more. Yeah, I hate them more. But do I hate him because he's a more? And the problem is, without a proper understanding of the scientific racism that would come, you know, a century, century and a half, two centuries after Shakespeare's death, we are now reading back all of the events that have happened since and saying, oh, his you know, his depiction of that particular character through our modern eyes, and there's no way to avoid that. We don't live in Eliz Elizabethan England, and mm. so we cannot possibly grasp the way those stories were perceived at the time. I want to move on ever so slightly to... I want to nudge it on. I want to nudge it on to... Uh, I think that's reading modernity in, into the past. I think there's a very, very good book out at the moment, actually. It's called uh, <coughs> The Blackamoors. Africans in Tudor England. One thing we know in 1596 is a merchant working on behalf of Queen Elizabeth asked for the Moors to be expelled from London at the time, of whom there were already too many in this realm. He wasn't successful, which is interesting. It means there were already enough Africans in England, but this time were not yet chattel slaves, for them to be a problem. Were they Moors from Spain and was that, were they men of power? I think the ideas around blackness that uh, consolidated post 17, 18, 1900s were, they were nascent in Shakespeare's time, but I would argue, I mean, you had German saints in this period, mm. African German saints, St. Saint Maurice. So the idea of blackness as in, 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 innately devilish and innately bad and innately criminal was there in a kind of uh, esoteric sense, but it hadn't been kind of consecrated in the, in the same way. I think Caliban is the only character, and even then it's not clear that Caliban's black. Caliban could be an indigenous American, mm -hmm. Caliban is based in the Mediterranean, but Caliban is the archetypal savage. I think there's no doubt about that, really. I think that's an accurate interpretation. But I think, I don't know if Shakespeare would have consciously been saying, oh, I'll make the white guy the bad guy and the black guy the good guy. Last point on this, I think it's very interesting that scholars have taken uh, to call in the passage of sonnets 127 to 154, the dark lady. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare calls her black over and over again. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a, a swathe of articles about five, six years ago that she might be this woman called Lucy Morgan from Clarkham, an African lady. But it's interesting that scholars chose to keep calling her the dark lady, even though Shakespeare calls her a black woman over and over and over again. How, how many, uh, it, that, 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 that period, how many uh, black people would Shakespeare have actually met? There were a few I I in London, but it's, it was doing a very daring thing when he made Othello a hero. I mean, if you look at the Jew of Malta, for example, if you look at his own air on in Titus Andronicus, the audience would have been very surprised to see a black man portrayed sympathetically as Othello is. So this is one of the ways in which, yes, Shakespeare is forward-looking and is yeah. liberal. Yeah. But I think it does yeah. come from him being an actor. I, think Paul, you... Paul, I was going to come to Paul, yeah, but I'll come, no, no, I'll, I'll come right back to you, Paul. And so there's something about the performance history that, that's so long and so rich that people can go back and say, now, well, Shakespeare might not have agreed with us, but I'm not sure we agree with us. Perhaps we should use this for moral reflection. There's, there's an example of that, Ira Aldrich. Um, Ira Aldridge, when he was playing in Russia in the late 1800s, changed The Merchant of Venice because in that period he didn't feel that Charlotte was a sympathetic character, he thought it was a racist character. Being an African-American actor who'd been expelled from Britain, he went and performed the play differently. I think in terms of uh, Shakespeare's supposed liberalism or not, I think we can look at the man and ask the question, well, one, he was possibly the only, though Stanley can correct me if I'm wrong, um, playwright that didn't go to prison for his beliefs in the period. And can someone be that close to the power of two monarchs 
and be liberal, be against power, be questioning of power. If you look at the way most of these authoritarian characters come out, mm -hmm. they come out on top. You look at kind of usurpers within Shakespeare, common trope, and they're always bad guys. So I think actually there is a sense of class privilege being maintained within Shakespeare as well, and there is a place that he couldn't step beyond if he's that close to kind of the two rulers of his time. But he pushed it as far as he possibly could. Maybe Perhaps within so. that, yeah. Kevin, yeah. I, I similarly have a sense that uh, we can... No, as well, didn't you, Carla? <laughs> It is the mirror up to nature. We're good, we're bad, we're horrendous, we're beautiful, we're horrible, we're marvellous, we're magnificent, it's we're, it's we're malicious, all that. It's characters. When you've got a great character... And it's all in us. You're like, ah, I've, I've been like that. I've felt like that. Mm -hmm. I've entertained those thoughts. I can pretend I'm... And I think that's the problem. I mean, it, obviously, the, the question was set up to kind of diamet diametrically oppose people. But that's the problem with a book that not tells us. you, you must do this, you must be moral, yeah. you must be... Because deep down, you kind of know you're not those things. Whereas exactly. holding something up and saying, actually, yeah. some days you're this guy, some and if you're lucky, you might be good, you know, six days out of the ten. Yeah, and Kevin, you were saying earlier, I do, I do bear pardon, but Kevin, you were saying earlier on that yeah. the Bible isn't so much character-driven, whereas obviously, for the obvious reason that these plays are to be formed, they, they're very much character-driven, some amazing characters. Are you saying that some of the, Bible, some of the characters in the Bible are somewhat one-dimensional? The Baz Luhrmann version a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, my, 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 my teenagers absolutely love that. I mean, that, re that I, I really... I was in my GCSE year, the year that, that came out. And honestly, it was the first time... Because a lot of people, as Stanley said, a lot of people don't like Shakespeare, and that's fine. You don't have a moral obligation to. But that film came out, and it wasn't received as a film by a 400-year-old author. It was received as a great film, full stop. We watched it, and it was one time in class when Shakespeare came on, and it didn't feel like punishment. Everyone agreed this was just... <laughs> it was a great film. I was lucky I grew up in a theatre, so I, I always felt that uh, sense of accessibility, which many of people in my class did not. But that film really changed everything. And the thing is, we didn't even question it. It was 1950s styling. In late 1990s LA, it seemed, with 14th century, 15th century Venetian kind of nod with Elizabethan language. And it was just like, all right, cool. You've done it well enough, so we'll accept it. Mm. And that's great storytelling. Alison, did you like that play, that, that version? Do you love these sort of... Seven long years since last I saw you. Oh, you rolling river. Tis seven long years since last I saw you. the 